Hello, everybody. This is Paul from Off Grid Desert Farming with Paul and Adrian. I want to welcome everybody to our chat today. This is uh, April the 13th, 2021, and it looks like things are spiraling out of control. Um, and uh, it's there's so much news coming in so early. I usually don't do my updates till later uh, at night, like six or seven, but um, there's just so much breaking news happening uh, in real time that I wanted to come on and do a this morning update. So, um, like I said, things are not looking good. I did a, uh, uh, a record nine videos yesterday trying to keep you uh, updated to all the news. So, what the breaking news is this morning is NATO and the United States are sending troops to the Russian border. They're rushing uh, 40,000 troops near the Russian border. And a lot of these are being uh, shipped uh, from the United States. I'm going to read you multiple, multiple, multiple sources of this information. This is not fake news. This is coming in today live. And the first one is from the Russian news agency TASS. Uh, this is just coming in. So I have uh, news from CNN, from uh, from CBS News, from Fox News, <clears throat> all the major news medias, <clears throat> excuse me, are starting to report on this. And I did a chilling uh, <clears throat> report last night. Uh, from Fox News uh, and this uh, representative from Hawaii stating that what is fixing to happen to the United States. I really do believe, folks, that we are on the verge of a nuclear war. First time in the history since World War II, since the United States dropped two bombs on Japan and ended the war. I think we're going to be a victim, folks, because we initiated that. Not we, but our administration, the Joe Biden administration is uh, taking up where Obama left off. And they want this war, folks, believe me, they want this war, they want this war to happen to usher in the new world order, the Great Reset, Agenda 21, Agenda 230. This has all been planned for 50, 60 years, the Great Reset, to reset the whole world system, order out of chaos. So this is not just happening, this war has been planned for a long time. The other breaking news is Russia now is calling, <clears throat> excuse me, calling us the enemy. They're not calling us an adversary. They changed their language now to enemy and they have warned. I think this is the last warning that Russia is going to give. They said, uh, stay out of the Black Sea region. Their spokesman, I'm going to read you articles from about three different sources. Their spokesman has made it perfectly clear that our U.S. warships in the Black Sea will not be safe. And I think this is the last warning because in about two days, there are two Navy destroyers heading into the Black Sea from the Bosphorus Straits. And they said that if they come into the Black Sea, that they cannot guarantee their safety and that accidents may happen. So all this has been happening in the last 24 hours. Uh, they had just uh, concluded an emergency meeting of NATO in Brussels. Our uh, defense uh, secretary, Lloyd Austin, and also our uh, Department of State official, Anthony Blinken, attended this meeting uh, along with most of the European chief NATO members. The head of the Ukrainian military was there, and they all pledged 100% to support Ukraine. So I think this war is unstoppable. Um, Joe Biden made a last ditch effort today and he called Putin up wanting uh, Russia to de-escalate. But I think this is just a stalling maneuver. I think uh, Joe Biden and his administration know that they're not going to stop this, but they're trying to stall a few days till we get forces over there. But the article I'm reading you this from the Russian news agency, I'm going to read you different articles from different uh news organization, but this is from uh, one of the four or five uh, Russian publications. This is called TASS, T-A-S-S, -S, and they are reporting that the United States, <clears throat> excuse me, now is sending American troops directly from America uh, on the NATO border. So let's get going here. NATO concentrating over 40,000 troops near the Russian border. This is came in this morning. This is uh, April the 13th, the American troops are now redeploying from the continental North America. That is the United States of America now. So they're shipping 
uh, troops now directly to Europe. This is a uh, an expedited uh, troop deployment. This was not planned, but Marfugel News about three or four days ago said he had intelligence coming in from his, sta his station or his YouTube channel that uh, American troops were being recalled in America all over. Uh, so evidently this is happening. Uh, we know that Ukraine has called up over 100,000 100, reserve troops, sent them to the border of Donbass and Crimea. We also know that Russia has been calling up their reserves. So let's get going. We're going to read you uh, these articles. NATO concentrating over 40,000. Now, this article says over 40,000. So they're rushing these troops now from pretty much all the NATO countries in Europe and from United States of America. But you have to realize that America has a lot of their equipment pre-positioned in Europe, in Ramstein Air Base in Norway, <clears throat> all along Europe. For the last 20 or 30 years, we have pre-positioned tanks, uh, APCs, uh, bombs, you name it, we have it in Europe. So NATO has been preparing for this war for over 20, 30 years. It says the American troops are now redeploying from the continental uh, America to Europe through the Atlantic, Russian Defense Minister Army General Sergei Soji has said. So let me go down and read this. It says, uh, Mer Mersmansk region, April 13th, 2021. NATO will concentrate over 40,000 troops and 15,000 items of armament and military hardware near Russian borders, <clears throat> basically in the Black Sea region and the Baltic regions, Russian Defense Minister Army General Sergei Soji said on Tuesday, overall 40,000 troops and 15,000 items of armament and military hardware, including strategic aircraft, will be concentrating near the Russian borders, the defense chief said. The American troops are now being redeployed from America to Europe through the Atlantic. So if any of you guys are doubting my news reports for the last three weeks, this should settle that issue right now. I have been reporting the truth from the beginning. This is not fake news, folks. This is the truth. This is coming in today. So American troops right now will be in this war. And I really do believe that Russia might go ahead and do a first strike on America and on NATO bases because they know if they give America uh, a few days or a week or two that, uh, you know, that it's just going to be more troops on the border of Russia. So I don't think America is going to escape this war. I think it's coming to our shores. If you listen to that report from Fox News um, <clears throat> last night with Tucker Carlson, this war could be over within an hour if it goes nuclear or less than 30 minutes. You know, there's Russian subs off the United States coast, both coasts, east and west, and probably even in the Gulf of Mexico. Russia deployed last week their, uh, their Poseidon uh, nuclear torpedoes in one of their last submarines that they have built, Belgrade. The Belgrade submarine is a special submarine that they have invented, <clears throat> and they just recently deployed the first one of out of three with six Poseidon nuclear submarines that these submarine or, or these torpedoes can go over 100 miles an hour under the ocean. Uh, and they can uh, go, I think, well, a range of about a thousand miles. Now, these are called the Russian doomsday uh, torpedoes. <clears throat> they are designed to explode underwater, creating a anywhere from 500 to 700 foot tsunami that will devastate, devastate the coastlines of the United States or any enemy that they detonate these off the coast with a radioactive tidal wave, pretty much rendering the coastlines of America uh, uninhabitable for probably hundreds of years with radiation. That is Russia's doomsday weapon to counter NATO and the United States. I told you folks that if you keep pushing are poking that Russian bear, that that Russian bear will come back to bite your ass. And that is what the United States and NATO has done over the last 20 years. And just since Joe Biden <clears throat> has become president of the United States, 
It hasn't even been six months yet, but Joe Biden is leading us into the third world war and it hasn't even been six months yet. Joe Biden and his administration has created this problem. Instead of de-escalating this problem, they have uh, antagonized Russia <clears throat> up to a point where Russia, I don't think is going to back down. I don't think there's no way to stop this war. I really don't. So let me keep on going. It says the American troops are now redeploying from the continental North America to Europe through the Atlantic. The troops in Europe are moving toward the Russian borders at this moment. The basic forces are being amassed in the Black Sea area and in the Baltic regions, the defense minister of Russia says. As the Russian defense minister pointed out, U.S. force groupings are being reinforced in Poland and in the Baltic states. <clears throat> the America's 430s concept has been adopted and is being implemented in, in the intensity of air reconnaissance has grown twofold <clears throat> and naval reconnaissance by 50% compared to last year. The Alliance annually holds up to 40 uh, large operational training measures of clearly anti-Russian bias in Europe in the spring of this year. The NATO Allies Forces launched Defender Europe 2021 drills, the largest exercise over the past 30 years, just uh, last year. So this is being reported, <clears throat> excuse me, by the Defense Minister of Russia. This is happening real time and I think that we are maybe days away from World War kicking off. I reported last night, I did an update uh, on the earlier video that I did last night, that Russia is sending out emergency notices to cities all across Russia to be prepared to bury mass casualty events from this war, folks. And uh, they're preparing for Russians to be killed in Russia, not in Ukraine. So I explained last night that the only reason you would have mass casualties in the center of Russia or in other parts of Russia is from a nuclear weapon detonation by either the United States or NATO. So they're planning uh, Russia all along. This is going to go nuclear probably very, very fast. So let me keep on reading the articles, but it doesn't get any better. I've been telling you that Jesus Christ is coming back. A lot of us might not, um, might not be alive here in a few days. If we truly are attacked, then hundreds of millions of Americans and hundreds of millions of Russians and people that live in Europe will be dead in a matter of minutes. They won't have a chance to repent of their sins. They won't have a chance to get right with God. They won't have a chance to do a deathbed confession. But you're, you, you have a chance right now, folks. God is warning you right now, time is growing short. Are you going to reject him and end up in hell because you were so stubborn that you actually have to see the bombs exploding before your eyes. Jesus Christ is coming back, folks. He told us all these things would happen before he returns to the earth. You're living in history. History is being made right now. I don't think this war is, it can be stopped. I don't think it will. And if you die in your sins, you're going to hell, folks, for eternity, being tormented day and night by demons tearing at your body in flames of fire with no escape. That's hell, folks. Hell is not living here on earth. Hell is an eternal separation from God. I've been warning people for years and years, but nobody believe me. They think you're chicken little. <clears throat> the sky is falling. The sky is falling. You're fear mongering. No, I'm not, folks. I'm trying to get you ready for eternity because eternity lasts forever. This life is going to end at some point, but eternity lasts forever. That's what's most important. Where you will spend eternity, folks. Even if you live to 100 years on this earth, we're all going to die eventually. But it looks like in the next week or two that hundreds of millions of people 
maybe even billions are going to perish off the face of the earth because this is not going to be a localized war. When this thing blows, folks, it's going to blow in China, in the Middle East, all across the world. People will lose their lives in a matter of seconds. And their decisions here on this earth is going to determine where they're going to spend eternity. So I was going to do this at the end of the broadcast, but the Holy Spirit is leading me to do this right now. We'll get to the news a little bit later. This is more important than any news. Where you spend up, where your soul ends up in eternity. So I'm going to give you a chance right now to make your peace with God. You might not have another chance, folks. We're on the verge of race riots again in America because of a uh, George Floyd killing. They, uh, the cop shot another black man in uh, Minnesota the other day. They're already rioting, folks. The world's in a mess. But you need to know where you're going to end up when things go downhill. So if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you've never acknowledged him as the Son of God and repented of your sins, the time is right now. Don't wait another second. You might not have another second. So if you cannot say for 100% that you know if you die, you'd go to heaven, and you want to make sure today, this is the day of the, uh, salvation, folks. I might not do another broadcast. The internet might come off, uh, go down. If we have an EMP, then you won't get any more broadcasts. This might be the last chance. So if you want to get saved, you want to get born again, the Bible says you have to repent of your sins. You have to be sorry for what you have done in your life. You have to ask Jesus to forgive you. So I'm going to give you an opportunity right now to do that. So if you want to get saved, you want to get born again, you want to have your insurance in heaven when you die, just repeat this prayer after me to say, Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I ask you right now, Lord, to forgive me of all of my sins and wash them away with your precious blood. I do believe that you are the son of God. And I do believe that you died on that cross and that you shed your blood for me. And that you rose again on the third day. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me eternal life. Amen. Now, if you said that the Bible says that your name now has been written into the book of life, you have to live whatever time we have left for God. You have to turn away from sin. Some of you watching this are living in sin with somebody that's not your husband or wife. You, you're shacked up together. You're having sex outside of marriage. Some of you watching this have had a kid out of marriage. You need to make an appointment right now at your justice of the peace and go down and get married, folks. God will not put up with sin. God will judge all sin no matter what it is. Get married while you have a chance. Don't live in sin anymore. Stop watching pornography. All God's looking for is an honest person, folks. God wants to be your friend, your confidant. He wants to have a relationship with you. He don't want you to join a religion. Religion was made by man to control man. God wants a relationship with you like your best friend. He wants you to talk to him like you uh, like you uh, talk to your best friend. That's what God wants. So I want to thank you guys for whoever said that prayer for the first time that now you can be assured of heaven if you die. But don't take the mark of the beast, folks. Don't take the mark of the beast. You know what I'm talking about. Do not take the mark of the beast. Anyway, we're going to get back to our news. But God wanted me to go ahead and do that right now. We have 468 people watching. Share these videos out, folks, because this is important information everyone needs to know. We are on the verge, I think, of World War III breaking out. So let me keep on going. The next article is from Pravda. Pravda. Now, I just read you an article from TASS News Agency. Now, Pravda is another Russian news publication. And what Sergei Soji, the defense minister of uh, Russia, has done, just done, he's deployed two of his armies and his uh, airborne forces to the western border to counter these NATO forces. Just, 
This information is just in today. He said, Russia has deployed two armies and airborne forces on its western border. Russia has deployed two armies and three units of airborne forces to its western border as part of a verification check. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Soji said at a meeting uh, at Severomornisk, uh, the RIA uh, news media has been reporting. All these articles are listed in the description box. Go back and read them for yourself. He says, Soji said that such measures were taken due to NATO's threatening military activities. So Russia now is responding to NATO's military troop movements. NATO is rushing all these troops in. They just had completed a meeting uh, in Brussels. Uh, and I'm going to read you about that in a few minutes. He said the troops, um, he said the Russian troops have shown full readiness and ability to fulfill the task of ensuring the military security of the country. Currently, these units are grouping and involved in exercises. He says on April 13th, Soji announced the strengthening of the Northern fleet to strengthen Russia's defense and protect its interests in the Arctic. According to him, the fleet is being equipped with modern military equipment that can be used in harsh climate uh, conditions. The same day, the minister, the Russian defense minister said that the United States and NATO were redeploying their troops to the borders of the European part of Russia and concentrating them in the Black Sea and Baltic regions. That's the article I just read you before this one. He said, in total, the North, Atlant the North Atlantic Alliance will deploy 40,000 troops and 15,000 units of weapons and military hardware near the Russian border. So all this information is coming in today. Uh, so like I said, Russia, they've got a small window of opportunity uh, to go ahead and launch their attack. This next article is from Yahoo News. This is breaking Yahoo News. If any of you guys got Yahoo uh, News or Yahoo Mail, this is coming up on your screen right now. Top Kremlin mouthpiece warns of inve uh, inevitable war with the U.S. over another uh, Ukraine uh, land grab. So this is Yahoo News. He says, uh, all out cyber warfare, nationwide force blackouts and the targeted disruption of Internet services for one of the Kremlin's top pro uh, propagandists, all of these tactics are fair game and what she describes as a faded war to come against the United States. Uh, she said war with the United States is inevitable, declared Margarita Simoyan, that's S-I-M-O-N-Y-A-N, editor in chief of the state funded, uh, the state funded Russian media outlets, RT Television, and Sputnik News. Those are two other Russian news publications, RT Television, RT, and Sputnik, who believes the conflict will break out when, she says when, not if, uh, Vladimir Putin moves to seize more territory from Ukraine. As Russian military buildup on Ukraine's doorstep mounts, the Kremlin loyalist has been urging for even more overt aggression and bloodshed in the campaign to annex Ukraine's Donbass region. The only thing standing in the way, they said, is U.S. support for their beleaguered, beleaguered neighbor, Ukraine. He said NATO has issued a statement on Wednesday demanding an end to Russian troop movements on the border with the disputed territory of Donbass and eastern Ukraine. This is the largest buildup of Russian troops since the annexation of Crimea in 2014. The U.S., underline the statement this week by deploying two warships in the Black Sea. So those warships have not are not yet there yet. It's going to be a couple more days, but I'm going to read you a couple articles just in a few minutes that Russia now has warned the United States that they will probably sink these two warships. He said on Tuesday, Russian De uh, Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Rabov threatened retaliation. We warn the United States that it, will, that it will be better for them to stay far away from Crimea and our Black Sea coast. It will be for their own good, he said. The escalation was foreshadowed on state television on Sunday evening with Vladimir Sov Sovlovi over the weekend. Uh, he said it was time for Russia to gear up for a showdown against the United States and prophesied a kind of war driven by hacking. 
the forced disruption of internet access is shutting down of power supplies and the all out offensive on US infrastructure. So they're saying that they're going to launch a major side, uh, a cyber attack on the United States, probably to start this war out. You can also probably count on that Russia and the United States will probably start shooting each other's satellites down uh, to take out the GPS system and all this. So uh, when, before this war starts, your internet and your telephones will probably go dead. I'm just warning you folks, if this war breaks out, you probably won't have internet service and then you'll know that the war has begun. When you go on the internet, your phone doesn't work, you can't get a phone call out, then you know that it's on. Um, he said, I do not believe, well, let me, let me keep on going. So that's just one article. Let me keep on reading. This is from Reuters. Now, Reuters, Thomas Reuters is a breaking news organization. And everybody knows about Reuters News. This is coming in from Reuters. It says, Russia calls USA an adversary, warns its warships to avoid Crimea. This is all breaking news this morning. That's why I'm coming on this morning to give you all this latest news. He said, Moscow has called the United States an adversary and not a partner. They warned the U.S. warships to stay far away from Crimea. Uh, <clears throat> Russia has moved 15 ships to the Black Sea for drills. Shrugs off U.S. warnings of consequences for actions. Uh, so let's go ahead and read this article. Like I said, all these articles are, will be in the description box. Uh, Moscow on April 13th, Russia on Tuesday called the United States an adversary and told the U.S. warships to stay well away from Crimea for their own good, calling their deployment in the Black Sea a provocation designed to test Russian nerves. Moscow annexed Crimea from Ukraine in 2014, and two U.S. warships are due to arrive in the Black Sea this week amid an escalation uh, in fighting in eastern Ukraine where the government forces have battered, uh, battled Russian-backed separatists in a conflict Kiev has said has killed over 14,000 people in the last seven years. The United States is our adversary. So this is the first time that Russia's actually said the word adversary or enemy. They used to... Uh, to describe us as a, a partner, a competing partner in the world. Now they are openly saying from the Russia's highest uh, news publications that the United States now is Russia's enemy. He said the United States is our adversary and does everything it can to undermine Russia's position on the world stage, which is true. The United States and NATO has done everything they can, just like this Russian guy has said, to diminish Russia's position in the world. Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Rabilov, uh, as cited by saying Russia uh, in, in the Russian news agencies, says, we do not see any other elements in their approach. Those are our conclusions, the agency quoted him as saying. So they're, they're saying right now to the whole world that the United States is uh, to be 100% blamed for this war breaking out. The United States is our adversary and does everything it can to undermine Russia's position in the world. We do not see any other elements in their approach. He said the comment suggests that the veneer of diplomatic niceties that the former Cold War enemies have generally sought to observe in recent decades is wearing very thin. U.S. President Joe Biden said in March that he thought the Russian he thought his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin was a killer and would pay a price for allegedly meddling in U.S. election. So that's pretty much what started this whole thing. Last month, Joe Biden said on national TV called Kilton a, a, a Putin a killer. And since then, all these Russian forces now have amassed on the Ukraine border. So I guess President Putin is going to show Joe Biden and our Pentagon and NATO how much of a killer he can actually be. So you can blame this war on the Democrats, pretty much on Joe Biden, the, the deep state, NATO. They have instigated this war because Survey Lavrov came out yesterday and said, the United States wants to know why all these Russian forces are moving on uh, the Russian border. He said, we live there. 
This is our land. We live there. But he asked another question. He says, why is the United States forces thousands of miles away from their own homeland? Why are they on our borders? Russia has been trying to warn us for years, folks, that this war would be breaking out. And that is what is happening. Uh, Rabakov's remarks suggest that Russia will turn, uh, will in turn push back against what it sees as an unacceptable U.S. interference in its own backyard. We warn, we warn that Russia now is saying, we warn the United States that it will be better for them to stay away far away from Crimea and our Black Sea coast. It will be for their own good. So I, I really do think that this is the last warning Russia is going to give America. And if, you, if America does not turn those two warships around, they will sink those warships. Each of these American warships carry about 96 Tomahawk cruise missiles. And uh, if any of these missiles are launched, then they're going to sink these ships immediately which I think will start this war and you, you're going to see missiles flying everywhere. He said the West is sounding the alarm over what it says is a large unexplained buildup of Russian forces close to the Ukraine eastern border in Crimea, which NATO Secretary Jen Stalenberg on Tuesday called Moscow to unwind. I explained this yesterday. The reason Russian forces are on the border of Ukraine and Crimea is because three weeks ago, the president of Ukraine signed a decree authorizing the Ukrainian military to take back Crimea and the Donbass region by force. Go back to, to videos I posted three weeks ago. This is why Russia has responded because Zelensky of Ukraine told his military to take back Crimea and Donbass by force attacking Russian forces. That's why Russia the last three weeks is pouring all this equipment in to defend Crimea, which they say they will never get back. And the Russian uh, speaking areas of Donetsk and Lukanesk. That's what started it all. This is not Russian aggression. This is aggression by Ukraine and by the United States and Biden administration pushing Ukraine to attack Russia, setting this whole war, uh, war uh, being set up right now. He said uh, Rabakov is also cited uh, as shrugging off U.S. talks of consequences for any aggressive, aggressive Russian actions and saying that Moscow has studied U.S. tactics toward Russia and has adapted their military accordingly. So Russia is not a third world country. Russia is not Iraq. Russia is not Libya. Russia is not Syria or all these other countries that we just picked off and conquered. Russia is a peer-to-peer -peer adversary. Only one of two countries that could take us out militarily is Russia and China and maybe North Korea if they get a, a, a sucker punch in with a, a, an EMP. But all this stuff is happening right now, real time. Um, He said, any threat to us merely confirms our belief that our course is the right one. Rabakov was quoted as saying, saying that the U.S. warships in the Black Sea to keep their distance are warning the U.S. warships in the Black Sea to keep their distance, given what he said was the high risk of unspecified accidents. There is absolutely nothing for the American ships to be doing near our shore. So the Russia, they keep on warning America. He said, there is absolutely nothing for the American ships to be doing near our shores. This is purely a provocative action by the United States, provocative in the direct sense of a war uh, of the word. He says, they are testing our strength, planning, uh, playing with our nerves. They will not succeed, Rabakov said. This is the chief spokesman for the Russian uh, military, for the Russian defense industry. He said Russia's Black Sea fleet is based in Crimea and has, has, and has powerful missiles and radar facilities on the uh, peninsula. Russia confirmed on Tuesday that it was continuing to move 15 Navy vessels 
to the Black Sea from the Caspian Sea to take part in drills. Now, Russia already has a large Black Sea fleet in the Black Sea, but now they're moving uh, 15 ships, uh, ships from the Caspian Sea to also join the Black Sea forces. So, like I said, all this stuff is being lined up now. I think it's going to be very long uh, before this war kicks off. Now, let me read you a, a couple more articles. This is from Zero Heads. Zero Heads. It says Russia warns U.S. warships to stay far away from Crimea for their own good. So this is just another article confirming what I just read you from directly from Russia. He said at a moment, the United States appears poised to send its warships near Ukraine as a strong deterrent message against Russian forces built up near the border of East Ukraine. Russia on Tuesday warned that the U.S. vessels better stay away from Crimea for their own good. A Kremlin further stated that the U.S. deployment into the Black Sea was a serious provocation, which serves no other purpose but to test Russia's strength and their nerves. Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ravrov issued a uh, statement on Tuesday uh, warning as follows. There's absolutely nothing American ships. There's absolutely no reason for American ships to be near our shores. This is purely a provocative action, provocative in the direct sense that of the word they are testing our strength playing on our nerves so i won't read this whole article again but go to the description box and read these articles for yourself um so let me read you this one here this is from war news uh 24 7. this is also breaking about the um the meeting that uh, uh or the telephone call that joe biden has uh, had with putin this morning it was an emergency call trying to get uh, Putin to de-escalate, but Putin's not de-escalating, folks. He said, U.S. President Joe Biden hastily picked up the phone this morning and contacted Russian President Vladimir Putin as all information converges that there will be an armed confrontation in the Black Sea. He said, in fact, Moscow recently changed the way it reports uh, on the United States a sign of rapid deterioration in U.S.-Russian relations. Thus, for the first time, Russian Deputy Foreign Minister described the United States as an enemy instead of the expression American partner. The communication shows that the situation has reached zero point, forcing U.S. President Joe Biden to call the murderer Putin and even propose a meeting. The United States is our enemy. An accident can happen said that the United States is our enemy and is doing everything it can to undermine Russia's position on the world stage. Russia will protect the Russian speakers of Ukraine, said Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Rabakov. American ships have no, uh, no reason being near our shores. These are very provocative measures they play with our power and our nerves. He said the United States obviously feels that it controls the seas of the world, but it must understand that the risk of certain accidents is very high. We have noticed something similar in another sea area this year. We warn them, this is Russia, we warn them that it would be better for them to stay far away from Crimea and the shores of the Black Sea. It will be for their own good, he has stressed. So let me go on down. Um, so uh, the rest of this is just the readout from Washington, the White House, telling what happened to the phone call. So let me keep on going here. This is from CBS News. Uh, CBS News is reporting this this morning. That's why I'm saying most of the major news outlets right now are picking up on this story. Fox, CNN, CBS. Uh, they're all starting to cover this news that I've been uh, covering for three weeks now. It says Russia warns U.S. to stay away for its own good as Ukraine standoff intensifies. So all this news is breaking this morning. He said, again, Russia has warned the United States on Tuesday against sending its warships to the Black Sea, urging American forces to stay away from the annexed Crimean Peninsula for their own good as a situation along Ukraine's border has caused increasing concern in the West. The U.S. Secretary of State is meeting with Ukrainian and NATO officials in Brussels today. 
uh, they made it clear that the Biden administration, along with its allies in Europe, has Ukraine's back and considers Russia and considers the Russian ongoing military buildup in the region very provocative. Uh, the Turkish foreign minister said on Friday that Washington had informed Ankara that two U.S. warships would pass through Turkish waters this week to be deployed in the Black Sea. The deployments would come amid a significant escalation in the conflict in eastern Ukraine between Russia-backed separatists and Ukrainian forces, which have U.S. and European support. So I told you that they just concluded that uh, NATO meeting in Brussels, uh, the U.S. Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, and our uh, other uh, uh, de defense guy, Anthony Blinken, along with the NATO uh, chief, Jen Stolenberg, have uh, just came out and made a press conference saying that NATO and the United States stands 100 percent ready to defend Ukraine from Russia. I don't know how better I can explain it, but I, that is a declaration of war, folks, that nobody's backing down. And this war looks like it will happen. Uh, maybe in the next uh, few days. I don't have a date, but you're all going to know, folks, when this, when this war breaks out, you're going to know it. Nobody's going to have to tell you. That's why I'm saying it is so important to make your peace with God because we don't know how long that we have left on this earth, folks, and eternity is staring each of us in the face right now. This is not fake news. This is very serious. This is probably the most serious situation that you have lived in in your life as far as world events happening. You are living in historic times right now. So let's keep on going. I want to read you about the meeting in, uh, of NATO. If I can find it. I'm trying to find that... Um, Let me go to Twitter real quick. Now, I will leave a link to Twitter. Now, if you go on Twitter and you type in Russia-Ukraine war or Russia-Ukraine or Crimea, they're going to come up with a bunch of um, uh, Twitter tweets showing you the latest information uh, coming in about that situation. They're going to show you all the troop movements. Now, the Russian troop movements and all the trains coming into Ukraine from all parts of Russia, that is still going on. Russia is reinforcing their troops with new tanks, with new equipment every day, folks. Those train tracks are going solid. So Russia has not stopped their reinforcement of troops and equipment into that area. And now Russia is also redeploying troops to the western border of uh, to counter all these NATO troops being poured in. So we are in the beginning. Like I said, this war could break out at any time. But Russia knows that unless they do the first strike, unless they act first, that uh, they uh, they won't come out good on at the end of this war. But they know that the United States will respond and NATO will respond with their own nuclear missiles and that many hundreds of millions of, of people are going to die. I don't think that they can back down from this. I don't think that this is a drill and I don't think there's no way to de-escalate this situation. It's too far gone. Joe Biden, even before he became president, folks, when he was uh, when they were in the debate, he said that he's going to make Russia pay. Joe Biden hates Russia. He hates Putin. So did Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton. So he's not wasted any time getting this war started. And the whole world is going to suffer because of a madman who doesn't even hardly know his name anymore. That's the president of the United States, a, a guy almost 80 that has dementia and Alzheimer's. That's the leader of the free world that's making these decisions that's going to end up killing probably hundreds of millions of Americans and who knows how many throughout the world. That's what America has elected. We are being judged, folks. America is being judged for its sins. United States was protected by God for all these years. We never had war on our shores because America was the light of the world. God used America to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
But when America turned its back on God, when America kicked out uh, God in their public school system, when you can no longer have prayer in school, when abortion was made legal in America, when homosexuality was made legal in America by the Barack Obama administration, when the Supreme Court legalized gay marriage, God was not happy. We have aborted over 60 million babies in America. We have sacrificed 60 million babies in America through abortion. God is not happy. God raises up nations to punish other nations. If you read the Old Testament, if you read the New Testament, that, how, that is how God punishes nations that have strayed from the faith. He raises up other nations to come against nations he wants to punish. America is being judged. How long do you think that God is going to let America not be judged? America has turned away from God. They have turned to pornography. They have turned to abortion. They have legalized all these perverted acts made normal now. God would have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah if he didn't judge America for its sins. This is judgment on America, folks. America is not going to escape this time. We are living in the end times. This is it. Armageddon is just probably a few years away. I don't believe this war here is the Battle of Armageddon. I believe this is the war before the Battle of Armageddon. But it all could morph into that. The Bible says unless Jesus Christ comes back soon, that no flesh would be saved, folks. That the human race would destroy itself with all these weapons of mass destruction that we have invented. The Bible also says that when Jesus comes back, mankind will be scarce, more scarce than gold. There will not be very many people left on the earth when he returns. You know that the book of Revelation says that two-thirds of the world's population will die in the tribulation period. That's over six billion people before Jesus comes back. There's around seven or eight billion people now on the earth. That, that means that six billion people is going to die from nuclear war, from famine, from pestilence, and from biological weapons being released. Six billion people. That's what our Bible says, and we're living in the book of Revelation right now. You're living in history. So I urge every one of you folks, make your peace with God today. No one is promised a tomorrow. Call up one of your relatives and tell them that you love them. Get unforgiveness out of your heart. If you have unforgiveness for anybody in your life, Forgive them now, folks. Don't die with hate in your heart against anyone, no matter what they've done to you. Jesus said, if you do not forgive those who have hurt you, God will not forgive you in heaven. We must forgive all those who have hurt us in our life. And try to tell somebody about Jesus before it's too late. That's our job now to spread the gospel while we still have time. No one knows the day or hour that Jesus Christ will return. No one knows that day or hour. Only God himself and all these channels and all these people with all these prophecies they say from God who told them when the rapture was going to be. They're liars, folks. No one knows the day or hour Jesus is going to return. So quit making those prophecies. The Bible says that only God himself knows when Jesus is going to return. You can't figure it out, folks. You're a false prophet. But the Bible also says there's going to be many false prophets in the last days. If you want to know the truth, read the Bible. Don't listen to these false prophets. Yes, Jesus will return, but nobody knows when he, when he will return. Only God. But the Bible also says when you see all these things happening on the earth, then you know that the time is near. It also says 
that just in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the Son of Man returns. We are living in those days right now, the days of Noah. The mark of the beast is here. The Antichrist is here. It's all coming to pass right now. But don't be despaired. The Bible says, look up for your redemption, draw us nigh. We should actually be excited. We should not live in fear. We should be excited because Jesus is coming back. We will soon be in heaven with him. Death will only last a second, but eternity lasts forever, folks. When this body, when this physical body dies, we are either going to either one place or the other. We are either going to heaven or hell. There is no middle ground. There is no purgatory. Your relatives can't pray you out. They can't light candles and get you out of hell. Your choice here today determines where you're going to spend eternity, folks. So don't be discouraged. Don't live in fear. Rejoice because we're fixing to meet our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, if you know him, if you have said that sinner's prayer. So I'm going to ask you one more time for people that showed up late. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is the day of salvation. You're not going to get another chance. If you can't say for 100% that if you died today, you would go to heaven and you want to make sure today, make that decision for God. Do not turn him away anymore. I don't know how many more news updates I have to tell you. The time is now. There's no time to wait. We might not get another tomorrow, folks. You might not have a, another chance. So if you want to get saved, if you want to get born again, just repeat this prayer. And be honest with God, and God will be honest with you. Just say, dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I ask you right now, Lord Jesus, to forgive me of all of my sins and wash them away with your precious blood. I do believe that you are the son of God. And I do believe that you died on that cross and you shed your blood for me. And I do believe that you rose again on the third day. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. And thank you, Jesus, for giving me eternal life. Amen. The Bible says that you are saved now. You're born again. Your name has been written into the book of life. Only the blood of Jesus can, co can cover your sins, folks. You cannot get to heaven by works. There's a lot of religions that preach that you're going to work your way to heaven. The Bible says that you are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. You can't work your way to heaven. Your church cannot save you. Being baptized in a church will not save you, folks. There is only salvation through repentance, through the blood of the lamb. The Bible calls Jesus the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Only through his blood can you reach heaven. God sent his only son. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son that whosoever believes in him shall have eternal life. Jesus was more than a prophet. Jesus was more than a good man. Jesus was more than a holy man. He was the son of God sent to earth. To pay for the sins of the world. God made a way for us to be in heaven with him when we die. So I want to thank everyone for showing up. God bless you. Share our videos out, folks. This is the most important information you need to share out right now. People need to hear this information. They need to hear the prayer of salvation. They need to know that we are living in the last minutes before this world changes forever. My one goal in life is to reach as many people for Jesus Christ as I can before uh, we're taken off of this earth. And that should be your goal, too, if you call yourself a Christian. I'm not asking for money. I'm not asking you to make a pledge. All I'm asking is share this information out, folks, as far and wide as you can before it's too late. I might not do another broadcast. I don't know if this is going to be my last broadcast or not. 
God bless you. We're going to go ahead and get off. And uh, if there's any other breaking news, I'll try to get on and, uh, and alert you to anything else going on. So we will see you later. Remember that Jesus Christ loves you. God loves you. And he said he would never leave you or forsake you. Bye-bye.